are back on Take Action News on We Act Radio, broadcasting from the heart of Anacostia in Washington, D.C. And, you know, part of the job of being a radio host, even a well-intentioned radio host, is excessiveness of rhetoric to catch people's attention, you know, to talk about, for example, the possibility of the ultra-high-tech Orwellian uh, mind-effing, mind-invading state approaching us at some point. But, you know, the next story, our next guest is going to tell us about, uh, indicates that maybe both my rhetoric and my vision of the possibilities of the totalitarian state are already out of date. Our next guest is Brian Merchant, who is a senior editor with Vice Magazine. Brian, first of all, thanks so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. Secondly, uh, you wrote a story recently about an event in Ukraine, one of my ancestral homes, in which uh, tens of thousands of Ukrainian protesters, there's a terrible uh, uh, civil uh, disruption going on there now, received a message on their cell phones. What did that message say? The message said verbatim, Dear subscriber, you are registered as a participant in a mass disturbance, end quote, uh, which was sent out to a group of protesters who uh, had been detected using uh, the, the signals that their phones were giving off to, to be in uh, a region that the government deemed to be sensitive where the protest was occurring. So, so let me ask you a couple questions that might clarify this for my audience if I've got it right. So first of all, they didn't just get a communication uh, through their cell phone. Their cell phone was used to locate them. Secondly, as a result of where they were located, it was determined that they were participating in a disturbance, quote unquote. Third, they were registered, quote unquote, whatever that means. And fourth, this is in a country where being registered in that way or being noted as a participating in a mass disturbance could have very severe effects on a person's life and freedom. Is that is all of that correct? That is all absolutely correct. And it's scary because the, the message was sent out in tandem with a new law going into effect that was passed by the newly uh, author authoritarian regime. Um, and then that law prohibits public demonstration wholesale, essentially. So it is, it is against the law to be uh, protesting or to be gathering in public. Uh, it's, you know, things have deteriorated, deteriorated very quickly in, in Kiev and this, this, uh, protest that's, that's gathering has really spooked the regime. So this was a very draconian measure that was instated in no way democratically passed, and it was handed down on Tuesday. And about the same time that it made that was that it was made official, these protesters received this text message. Um, and yes, they're registered. Whatever that means, again, there's a details are very cloudy as to what that means, but we, we do know that a lot of protesters are being arbitrarily apprehended, are being taken in, sometimes uh, even in extreme cases, tortured and abused and harassed and mocked by the police. So does it, for, so couple, I mean, there's so many implications to this story, but one of them is, uh, do we even know what the regime said the penalties were going to be for being being a participant in a mass disturbance, or did they leave that ominously vague, or what? Yeah, it's still ominously vague. It's a good way to describe uh, what's going on. The, all of these resolutions are being hastily passed. Uh, there's Again, there was no oversight that didn't pass through legislative bodies. They're kind of executive uh, decisions. That have been that have been handed down, and the state is having an incredibly difficult time, uh, e even managing I its new law or or prosecuting. I mean, there, there's been no known cases of, of prosecution quite yet. Uh, it's what we what we have seen is uh, the cases like like yesterday, this video that went viral. Uh, a guy was pulled out of the crowd because he had been deemed to be participating in the protest and was subsequently subjected to sort of uh, Abu Ghraib-style uh, humiliation and, and some would say torture at the hands of the police. Um, so it, there are a lot of implications. Uh, I, the thing that struck me most of all was the willingness by a state to embrace uh, technology to, uh, to exploit uh, draconian measures like this, uh, to, to, like you said, not only sense or detect who they deem to be dissenting, uh, 
but to notify and register and ostensibly log, you know, enter into some log to people that, that have been protesting. So this, there's, a, there's a record of this ostensibly. Now, there's been some debate that I've seen over whether or not uh, this, this is actually going on or it's as sophisticated as, as it seems to be in the true Orwellian sense that would be truly frightening. So there's been some, you know, uh, speculation that sending out this text message is more of a scare tactic than, than anything. But, but, but even so, um, the implications are, are just as frightening to me, seeing what the, what the regime is capable of. Well, not only what the regime is capable of, but one of the reasons why I wanted to talk to you about this, and that's an important story, but what the technology is capable of. That's so right. even if, for example, this is a, a threat, the technology is capable of locating people geographically this way, even micro-locating them, isn't it? It is, yeah. And it, it absolutely is, yeah. I guess I could say, if I got a message like this in some totalitarian future United States or, uh, or, or Ukraine or somewhere else, no, I gave my phone to a friend. I mean, I guess you could try to protect yourself that way, but uh, it's a thin, you know, and it might not hold up in a U.S. court of law. But I guess one of the things that strikes me, and this may seem to you like a left field connection, and you're free to tell me if you think so, but, you know, I think, for example, the, the trend in the last 10, 15 years that even in this country that you're not allowed to demonstrate straight, for example, near a political convention or near the President of the United States, that you need to be a mile or so away in something that's kind of in an Orwellian phrasing called a free speech zone. So I just even wonder if at some point, you know, you could be caught outside the free speech zone. I don't know, but I guess I guess the main point is, um, doesn't the NSA also use cell phones in uh, emails in some ways that uh, Americans should? find disturbing oh yeah or is that not well that well this is the old this is the ultimate fear of a lot of the uh, of the proceedings with the nsa revelations here that's is a going down a slippery slope where you can wind up in a situation like this uh because in the ukraine the, the the technology that they're deploying isn't really all that sophisticated even if they are to detect cell phone signals in a given region uh to locate them and then to send a mass text uh, that, that's technology that we, we have had for years now. It's just the political uh, the willingness to, to sort of brazenly I embrace it and to flout it. And, and again, it's kind of, you know, birds of a feather of, of, of what we're seeing with, with NSA and with their, their policies and this mass surveillance. Um, so far, the defense of NSA policies has been that they are not using the data or they're not collecting the data that they have the capability to collect in any nefarious way, right? They can, they're not even denying that they could collect uh, loads and loads of data. They have access to our emails, to our SMS messages, to our, you know, our Skype uh, correspondences. They're just saying that, well, we're only taking the metadata. We're only taking this. And now metadata, by the way, is certainly enough to, to determine a location, as exactly as you said, a, a location of a text sent from a supposed free speech zone or someone who ventured outside of it. Uh, that is precisely the fear, uh, it, it is that these, the opaque workings of the courts and the policies that govern the NSA will eventually break down under a future administration or a current one or you know, given or after another terrorist attack or, or a change in, in bureaucratic policy that the public isn't aware of, because all of these policies are so opaque. We don't know, you know, the day-to-day -day basis of how the NSA gets governed, and Obama and uh, the yeah. FISA courts won't tell us. Well, we have to leave it there, but Brian Merchant, Vice Magazine, thanks so much for being with us. Maybe the Ukrainian government has done us a service by letting us know how this technology can be used. Uh, th again, thanks for joining us. I'm RJ Eskow, and you've been listening to Take Action News. Please join us again next week, where we'll cover these issues again in depth. Um, and beyond that, have a good week. Watch that State of the Union, and we'll be watching with you. Good night.